<laughs> Hi. Hello there. While the Commander is getting ready to review Season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds... What? It's been released already? Yes. Well, in just a few days, actually. I'm not sure if I'll watch it. I'm, I'm still not over Hammer's death. Uh, McClurk, spoilers? Some of our viewers might not have seen the first season yet. Ah, my bad. Sorry. Carry on. So, we thought, in order to get ready... Why not revisit our reviews of Season 1's episodes? Just make sure you skip Episode 9. McClark! Sorry, sorry. Go on. So here they are, all reformatted for the white screen. Ah, well, uh, most of them anyway. We somehow lost some of the original footage for the first episode. What? What kind of incompetent ship is this? You better find uh, those missing clips, Ensign, or so help me. There won't be much of you to recognize once I'm done with you. Deleted. Uh, There's nothing I can do, McClark. Roll them. No! Oh, I've so been looking forward to this. Hey, Cameron Fennec here, and Ensign Mount returns as Christopher Pike, captain of the Enterprise, just a few years before Kirk took over. First off, I do have issues. The Enterprise itself, although gorgeous both inside and out, doesn't have the cramped submarine feel of the original series, making it hard to reconcile within its historical context. Also, Vulcans are so repressed they make Victorians look like overt exhibitionists, but not here, and that's glaring. There's genetic tech and transporter capabilities that we've never seen before in any chronologically future Star Trek show. And the links to Discovery's second season highlight just how impossible it should be to hide her fate from the galaxy. Hmm, sounds like you didn't like it. Well, actually, the story was interesting, and it did feel like a traditional Star Trek adventure all wrapped up by the time the credits roll, complete with obvious social commentary. So I'm awarding Strange New Worlds two and a half paws. Ah, the Enterprise. The latest technology available to the Federation, huge rooms, and a real-life roaring fireplace in the captain's quarters. Wow, their life support system must be remarkable if they can casually waste so much oxygen like that. Indeed. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and the Enterprise is off to explore a comet. Now, that anachronistic tech I mentioned before still bugs me, with an Enterprise that is just too wide and gleaming compared to its TOS version. I might accept it better if I think of it more as a reboot than a prequel, because I'm enjoying the show. This second story is very interesting, dealing with an original mystery with some unexpected twists and turns, with everyone having their part to play while giving Uhura a particular focus. I thought the dynamics worked very well, but the ending was too cheesy for my liking, especially a moment with Spock which just doesn't work. The warding children of the comet, three paws. Remember that episode where Scotty jerry-rigged a transporter to keep himself alive for 75 years inside the buffer? Oh yeah, that was so cool. Turns out, that was just a standard feature. Oh, so Franklin did deserve better. Hey, Commander Fennec here, and it's pandemic time. The main story has a very classic Star Trek feel, with an uncontainable disease and monsters which might not be monsters. That part was great. It's nothing new, but it was well-paced and those jackets look pretty sweet. But the episode was led down by a couple of things. A revelation about one of our crew members raises a ton of questions about other characters we know from other series, namely Flox and Bashir, and an ending which made no sense. I had to watch it again to see if a crucial piece of equipment could have contributed to the problem, but it hadn't been used. And this led to a very saccharine ending which clashes with the ingenuity of our dear Montgomery Scott. So I'm awarding Ghosts of Valeria two paws. Pike and crew meet the Gorn, encountered for the first time in the classic Trek episode, Arena. Whoa, does that mean they're breaking canon again? How are they portrayed? With a cheap suit like the original, or a CGI like an Enterprise? Guys, you don't need to worry about any of that. Hey, Commander Fennec here, and remember Balance of Terror, The Wrath of Khan, Starship Down? Well, this is the modern take, and boy does it hit all the marks. The sense of claustrophobia and danger from both the enemy and the environment also reminded me of those old World War II submarine movies. It was pitch perfect. And the Gorn are now cemented as a believable and formidable adversary. Even the character interactions and developments were excellent and appropriate for the situation. A minor downside would be why was Harura studying under Hammer? It felt like a forced pairing even though it worked well. And if power use was so critical, does that mean Mbega's daughter's dead now? <laughs> Doubt it. I'm awarding Memento Mori the full four paws. You know Dr. Roger Corby, the pastor of archaeological medicine and fiancé to Nurse Chapel? The very same. One of them, based on this episode. Do you think they have an open relationship? Hmm. 
Hey, Cameron Fennec here, and welcome to the first comedic episode of Strange New Worlds. To be honest, I'm not sure if it worked as intended. Oh sure, there are definitely some funny moments, but not really enough, especially since it takes about a third of the episode to get going. Funny or not, there are also some great scenes. It starts for instance with a fantastic dream sequence with many callbacks, or should that be call forwards, to TOS's Amok Time. And Pike's story is definitely my absolute favourite in this episode's many threads. One thing I'd like to note, this Nurse Chapel is great, but she's definitely not the original Nurse Chapel. I feel it would have been much better had she been a totally different character. I'm awarding Spock Amok two and a half paws. You know that famous Vulcan saying, Live long and prosper? No, not that one. Logic is the beginning of wisdom? No. <gasps> Only Nixon could go to China. What? No. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Or the one. Imagine taking that to its extreme. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and we're presented with a complex story, and yet it's a predictable one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Just like when you ride a roller coaster, you know that after a steep climb there's going to be a sheer drop. Here, you know that something isn't quite right, and the unveiling is both satisfying for the viewer and horrific for our characters. This is predominantly a Pike story, but there's also a good amount for Ahura to do, as well as some touching scenes with Dr. Mbenga. All these threads work together as a whole to lead us to the episode's stark ending, and Aurora's justification does make you ponder. A warning, lift us where suffering cannot reach. Three paws. Ahoy me mateys, to the riggins, hoist the black flag, give no quarter, grab the rum, cause I'm making a lovely pancake flambe. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and you've guessed it, it's the pirate episode. But it's also so much more than that. The plot is pretty convoluted and the episode is riddled with many tonal shifts. We go from action to introspection to thriller to comedy. You wouldn't think it would work, but it so satisfyingly does. You're bound to see one of the shocking reveals a mile off, and I have some serious questions about the combat readiness of Pike's entire crew, but there are many moments I truly enjoyed, such as every scene Pike's in. Seriously, can Ensign Mouse do no wrong? Spock's internal conflict is always interesting to watch. Nurse Chapel truly shined here too. Oh, and let's not forget to Pring. We know the tragic outcome of their relationship, but I just can't help but warm to her. I'm awarding the serene squall three paws. When everything is calm and peaceful, you just don't jinx it. This is just superstitious twaddle. Do you really want to tempt fate, like Pike did? Well, when you put it that way. Hey, Kamala Fennec here, and here's one of the weirdest episodes in a good long while. Discovery and Picard have shown us a very serious side to Star Trek, but something that often made this franchise fun are the oddball episodes. Strange New Worlds hasn't been afraid to portray a lighter side to sci-fi, and they've gone full oddball with this story, where our crew are taken over by, well, something. The focus is on Dr. Mbenga and Hammer, which is great as they haven't had much to do over the last few stories, and here we're immersed in a strange adventure where no one is who they seem. It's a refreshing take, funny and moving in equal measure, where there are no real bad guys, just a mystery to solve, and a brave ending which wasn't fully expected. I'm awarding the Legion of Kingdom three paws. Ah, a classic horror story, heavily drawing from Alien, Predator, now's not a good time to be a newly introduced character, if only it were that simple. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and we're delving into horror with this one, and to be fair, it's pretty effective. Yes, they've redressed the Enterprise's sets to save on cost, but the production values were still great, and the sense of foreboding and tension were effective, but oh man, was it predictable at times. The classic horror tropes were there for all to see. However, and this is your SPOILER ALERT! SHIELDS UP! There's nowhere the Gorn we know from Arena, a species capable of language, reasoning, and who've built a starfaring civilization, would be those rampaging creatures. However, since we know nothing of their homeworld, maybe these ferocious animals are the Gorn's pets? Also, Emma's death was a complete shock. Why? <laughs> You'll be sorely missed. If Plot Armor won't save our main characters, we better brace ourselves for the finale. I'm awarding all those who wander three paws. Did you notice that a season of Strange New Worlds doesn't equate to a year of adventures? I caught that too. This one spanned three years. At this rate, we'll be catching up to Kirk in a couple of our years. Maybe even sooner. Hey, Commander Fennec here, and the finale takes us back to the future, but be warned. SPOILER ALERT! SHIELDS UP! Pike finds a way to avoid his big chair fate, but the consequences are dire for the galaxy. In order for him and us to understand just how bad the mess he got us into is, we're then reliving the events of Balance of Terror, one of the best stories of the original series, heck, the whole franchise. 
we get to see the different command styles of Pike and Kirk. And speaking of Kirk, I'm not sure about Paul Wesley. He lacks the charm and swagger of Shatner, and to make it worse, he looks too much like Jimmy Carr for my liking. <laughs> Still, there are some very good character moments, and I'm awarding a quality of mercy three paws. Share your thoughts in the comments, live long, and may the force be with you. So you see, McClurk, your uncontrolled anger stems from not realizing that Emir's purpose in life was to fix what was broken, and by sacrificing himself, he achieved his purpose while saving the lives of his crewmates. Yeah, I understand that, Counselor. But I just don't know if I ever get over it. It will take time, but you will see that life moves on and new adventures will occur. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Thank you. So, do you think you'll be watching the second season with us? I'll give it a go. Good. Good. Oh, and do you think engineering could spare a little corn so we can watch the show with, uh, you know, some snacks? Sure. I'll go grab a spare bag from the container. Wait a minute. Patrick! I surrender!